Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in the series on Komodo Dragon's openings. We are going to be taking a look at 1E4 and then two of the mainline replies, C6 and E6. Let's start with the Karakar. So um, I let uh, Komodo Dragon do quite a bit of analysis on, uh, on this position. Went to depth 56 and uh, 459,000 million nodes uh, analyzed and uh, it came up with the short system so uh, d4 d5 and then e5 the advanced karakan now there are two main uh, possibilities here black can play uh, c5 which uh, in england we know as the henkin arkel system uh, after the two grandmasters who've uh, done a lot to popularize it igor henkin from uh, israel and keith arkel from england um, the main line, however, is Bishop F5. And, uh, well, there are a lot of very sharp lines. Alexei Shirov's done lots of stuff with Knight C3, followed by G4. But probably the main line nowadays is a line that was uh, devised by Nigel Short, which is Knight F3, E6, and then Bishop E2. And this was, uh, well, really a very clever idea. I mean, what uh, White reasons here is that um, uh, Black has developed it's light squared bishop outside the pawn chain. And um, um, I mean, I think, you know, orthodoxy says that once that's happened, black's development problems are behind it. However, um, the pawn on e5 takes away the d6 and the f6 squares from, uh, uh, from black's kingside pieces. So in general, it's always a little bit tricky to develop them. Add the bishop on f5 into the mix, and you can see that there can be a sort of a log jam on the king side for developing. And uh, yeah, in practice, this bishop on f5 is as much uh, a weakness uh, hit by white's pawns and white's pieces and getting in the way of black's other kingside uh, pieces as a strength. At any rate, black still has uh, problems to solve. Uh, the other point is, is that when the, with the bishop on f5 absent from the, uh, uh, from the queen side, it makes the, um, uh, the black queen side light squares a little bit vulnerable, uh, as well as the, uh, the black center, which is on light squares. The bishop on f5, it cuts across the, uh, the h7b1 diagonal, but it doesn't do anything to support the pawn on d5. So ideas like c4 and then queen b3, uh, you know, just very, very uh, um, uh, dangerous for, uh, for black. So um, what does Komodo Dragon think? Well, Komodo Dragon goes for um, a very big main line in actual fact. And uh, um, this has been seen many, many times. It's actually following 20 moves of theory here. So this is a kind of the evolution of the short system. White plays the bishop to e3, when black plays c5, and then just tries and hits with uh, c4. Hits the pawn on d5, and also opens up b3 and a4 for the white queen to attack some light squares. Knight bc6, queen a4, this is all well known. Knight c3, a6, castles queenside. Looks aggressive, but black manages to exchange off the queens. Takes, takes. Knight f5, knight f5, bishop b6. Still completely in mainline theory here. <coughs> Rook c8, g3, bishop e7, bishop f3, g5. Still going. Bishop e4, takes, takes. Knight b4, king b1, rook g8. And, uh, well, here Komodo uh, suggests a new move, Rook F1, has been played in a, in an, uh, uh, a correspondence game. Uh, here Komodo wants to play Knight A4. I mean, it's not uh, trivial, uh, not as trivial for a human player as the uh, engines would make you believe. But, um, in principle, this should be uh, um, uh, drawn. I think Komodo ends up with an evaluation uh, of about 0.1 or something like that. So, uh, nothing too amazing. So that is Komodo Dragon's uh, main line uh, against the Karakhan. So uh, makes you think that the Karakhan is not such a bad opening. Uh, but let's go back uh, after e5 to c5. Uh, not bishop f5, which we've just looked at, but c5. And uh, funnily enough, uh, there are quite a few videos on the Game Ch Changer channel with this because uh, um, Alpha Zero played 3e5 as well uh, and the short system as well and uh, Stockfish played c5 quite often. And uh, um, actually Alpha Zero played quite a few different things, but including the system that Komodo Dragon goes for after um, a lot of analysis. And that's the idea, d takes c5, e6, knight f3, bishop c5 and a3. And uh, White's idea is simply to expand with b4, c4, 
um, and then uh, develop with uh, knight d2, bishop b2, bishop d3, very uh, natural smooth development and uh, try and claim an advantage in that way. Not uh, too easy, um, a6, bishop d3, b4, knight d2, c4, knight g6, bishop b2, queen c7 and now after takes takes instead of castles which was played in a in a low ranked uh, correspondence game uh, komodo dragon wants to play b5 which you know to be honest looks uh, um, a little bit more uh, more promising for uh, for white but again you know komodo ends up um, with an evaluation of 0.42 which is a slight advantage for white not winning of course but well what can you expect when uh, when both sides are playing reasonably from the opening but again, this is um, a Komodo Dragon's choice. But do check out these uh, um, Alpha Zero um, uh, games. I'll put them in the uh, um, in the video comments uh, because uh, there's a lot of very interesting stuff there from the engines against this line. So that's the uh, the Karakhan, advanced Karakhan, and then the uh, the short system if Black plays the uh, the main line Bishop F5. What about the French? The French, my favourite opening. Well, Komodo Dragon, after a lot of analysis, it goes for d4, d5, and knight c3. So, uh, uh, the PCC in the background, clapping going on after a, um, a deserved win for Stockfish against Rothschilder. So, um, uh, and now there's two possibilities, really. There's uh, um, knight f6, which is Komodo Dragon's main move. Uh, but there's also bishop b4 as well, which is the French winner. And uh, this is quite interesting. After uh, e5, knight e7, a3 takes takes, c5. The key question is, was uh, Komodo Dragon going to go for the move queen g4 with the sharp poison pawn variations? Well, in the beginning, Komodo Dragon was uh, very interested in this. But then afterwards, after uh, a lot more thinking, it came up with Alpha Zero's favourite move, h4. Um, and uh, yeah, what's the idea of h4? Actually, the idea is to uh, start um, uh, loosening up the, the dark squares on Black's king side with h5 to h6. And of course, if Black prevents it with h6, well, we've tied down the g pawn and this gives us a target to attack. So um, queen to c7, and now Komodo wants to play rook h3, which is uh, also a choice of uh, Caruana, uh, Fabiano Caruana, against Richard Rapport in the game uh, played in Baku in 2021. Um, Alpha Zero actually preferred either um, Rook B1 or H5. I mean, actually, Alpha Zero was completely willing to uh, sacrifice the um, uh, the D pawn in uh, in this way with uh, Queen C3 check, Bishop D2, Queen takes D4. Um, and there's something that we examine in the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement, my new book, uh, that the modern engines are not at all afraid of sacrificing the D4 pawn in uh, French structures. The only important thing is that they desperately want to keep the pawn on e5. The d4 pawn isn't important, but keeping the pawn on e5 is important. It provides outposts and also restricts the uh, the opponent's pieces and pawn chain. Um, but uh, Komodo prefers uh, rook h3, and after knight c6, h5, h6. Well, Fabiano Caruana played queen g4. Knight f3 is what um, uh, Komodo Dragon wants. And now um, it follows up with, uh, well, this move, which is uh, a novelty. Bishop d2, bishop d7, queen c1, c4, a4. Pretty typical uh, uh, French winner there in principle. Uh, should be a, um, a bit better for white. Uh, Komodo gives itself an evaluation of 0.62. But uh, quite striking to see that uh, this move h4, alpha zero's favorite, um, is, uh, is also Komodo's favorite after a, a long bit of thinking. After knight f6, quite interestingly, uh, Komodo Dragon thinks that best play is a very sharp and concrete line that, I, that uh, in my mind anyway, is the Agdestein variation. Uh, because Simon Agdestein, who, uh, well, not really a chess professional, he was thrown into an elite tournament and uh, he chose this line as black. It's a very sharp, concrete line and he had enormous success with it. Uh, people found it impossible to break. Um, yeah, it's been analysed to enormous depths and uh, in actual fact, uh, Komodo's main line is uh, yeah, known up till move 27 in actual fact. So takes takes, all these moves, uh, there's been uh, courses on this. Uh, there was a, a French course by uh, Rustam Kazimzhanov, ex-FIDE world champion and uh, very, very strong player, uh, second of uh, Fabiano Caruana for a long time, uh, where he explains these lines very well. But um, this is basically it. I mean, it looks very unpleasant for black, to be honest, but, um, well, with uh, enough analysis, you can uh, you can hold it. And uh, this is uh, the uh, 
uh, how the uh, the the Komodo uh, uh, line is looking, and uh, well, Komodo gives this a, a slight advantage for white, uh, 0.39, but um, in principle it should just be a draw. Black should be able to hold this. Um, with the opposite coloured bishops and uh, this fractured pawn structure, and uh, you know the big difficulty of advancing any uh, any past pawns. But still, you know, I mean, uh, in an engine game, this would be uh, guaranteed drawn. Uh, in a human game, maybe not so clear. You can always go wrong in these types of positions. But uh, well, Komodo wanted to play the move rook c4 and follow up with bishop c6, creating some sort of uh, unbreakable barrier along the uh, the fifth rank, and that won't, yeah, that won't be easy to win. So there we are. Um, basically, three knight c3 for uh, for white against the um, uh, the French, and uh, in particular, very interesting against the winner. This move uh, h4, which uh, was an alpha zero favorite, and uh, well, just has a very good positional basis. Just trying to uh, play the pawn to h6 and weaken up the dark squares, considering that blacks swapped off the dark squared bishop. And uh, yeah, also interesting to see that uh, Komodo Dragon plays the move that I've always preferred. Uh, knight f6, the uh, Steinitz variation, and uh, um, yeah, and uh, feels that that's the uh, black's best reply. So there we are. That was uh, the Karakhan and the French. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the Sicilian and also against 1e5. Not the Berlin, but some other lines that uh, that White could play against 1e5. Okay, thanks for watching.